Today on Nation, let's talk about losing sight. Now it's busy, you're crazy, what are you losing sight on? What can you do better? Hopefully you'll pick out three things from the show, but either way, hopefully it's not a waste of your time and you enjoy yourself. So stay tuned to WCR Nation. What's up everybody? Jersey here from Window Cleaning Resource and you're here. What's going on? Man and ma'am. Uh, what's up? If it's your first time checking us out, awesome, super cool, thank you. Um, please do have a look around. We are almost to a episode 100, so there's a 100 episodes that are 30 minutes long for you to go binge on if you are feeling froggy. Go and do that. It's a weekly podcast. comes out every Friday. It is on SoundCloud, Google Play, iTunes, all those places. And, of course, it's also on YouTube. We get the video version and the audio version. So watch, listen, whatever. Most importantly, if you are on YouTube, that's where the conversation uh, is going on. So check in. Say what's up. Tell me the show sucked. Tell me my nose is crooked. Tell me you don't dig my different hair. I don't care. Just comment on anything and make sure to give us a thumbs up on YouTube. Um, I got some shout outs, man. You guys have been going crazy, 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 letting me put orders in, um, calling me, man, you guys are just epic. Uh, so flipping awesome. So I can't say thank you to everybody, but, uh, this week we're going to give a couple shout outs to Cameron Clark, Ian Breckhouse and, uh, Casey Hooper. What's up y'all? Um, yeah. And if you want to order your supplies through me, that is the greatest thing you could possibly do. Greatest thing. It's even better than world peace. I uh, know, but thank you guys. If you want to order your supplies through me for window cleaning or pressure washing, just throw it in your cart. Text me, be like, yo, it's in my cart. Or uh, call me. I can help you walk you through anything, answer any questions, whatever. My number is 862-312-2026. Get a piece of paper. I'm going to be your rep. I'm going to be. You're here. You want me to be your rep. If you're watching on YouTube, I should have like some kind of, you know, hypnotic thing. But anyway, it's 862-312-2026. Let me put in orders for you. That would be most awesome. And tell me, because everybody's doing that now, is uh, tell me what I can buy uh, letting you put the orders in. I've had people tell me I can get name brand spaghetti. I can get name brand Windex. I can get name brand everything. So this week, thanks to those guys, uh, I'm actually buying name brand bread. Ooh, getting that artisanal, you know, Sara Lee fancy stuff. But thank you very much, guys. Anyway, this week we're talking about um, losing sight. And it's very easy this time of year because we are finally, finally rocking and rolling. Almost everybody is. I just talked to somebody the other day that actually still had ice on some lakes up in Minnesota. In uh, Minnesota there. But if you are crack a lack in either way, uh, this is what we wait for all year is busy season. But the big thing in busy season is you can forget a lot of things that were kind of important before because, you know, it was in your brain. You had the time to do it. You had all that. And now you don't. So don't lose sight on these things. And like I say every single week, it's your business. You can't do anything wrong. I'm just some dude with a mic. And uh, I do videos, I guess. Uh, so take it with a grain of salt. But here's some ideas. Uh, the big thing to think about is when you're busy doing work, or even if you're out of the field and your duties change, which they do basically every season, right? Four times a year they change. They either get to doing the work, keeping the people happy who you're doing work for, or it's out there getting work and keeping your employees happy. But either way, when you're super busy, the problem is that you leave stuff behind. That may have been remembered when you had time, now you don't. You don't even know you're forgetting it. You're leaving it behind. I did this pretty badly one year. This was earlier on. For whatever stupid reason, I wasn't thinking of my collections report, which is one. And uh, by the time it came done, I was so behind. I didn't even really realize because, you know, everything was coming in. And all of a sudden, slow time, like, man, I was like, some jobs hadn't paid me in three months. 
It was crazy. Those are route jobs. It's different, you know. It's, uh, awful. So you don't want to leave this stuff behind, obviously. Um, so here's a couple of the, the different things. Now, everybody's in a different season themselves in business. So you have to kind of realize where you're at. But the big thing that people kind of leave, and I would say almost number one, we talked about it uh, in the past uh, few weeks, is customer retention. The big thing is that we're so excited to get new people in or even to get those existing people in that we forget about keeping the other people happy so that they're primed for when they need us. And that is a big one. We only have so much time and I completely understand that. But forgetting your customers that you already have, not keeping them happy throughout the years or informed or relevant to them is not going to help you come fall, right? We get a little lull in summer, uh, depending on where the temperatures are and everything else. Uh, you do get a little bit of a kind of a break, which is nice and it's earned because we're so crazy in spring. But when it comes to time for fall, if you didn't keep the customers that didn't book in January or in spring happy, or relevant, they might have hired somebody else. They might be on another playing field where they're just not even going to go with you because they forgot you exist. And now you're going to have to start the whole thing over to kind of bump up who you are. You're going to have to let them know. You're going to have to inform them again, remind them, hey, we're here. But there's one thing to do that you can keep yourself uh, fresh and relevant throughout the year. Now, even if somebody didn't book in spring, which I know it's our busy season, but every now and then it doesn't happen, uh, or people book early in spring and now they get forgotten the rest of the time, remember, send out your emails. If you didn't go back and um, keeping customers happy, uh, the episode is called uh, Make Them, Keep Them. Listen to the Keep Them section. Uh, get your emails out, even though it seems you're done because you're busy. Get your postcards out, your 4 by 6 just reminding people of new services. Right? If you've done your call list, you should be getting ready to do it again for fall. You have to get all those things in and keep relevant to these people. Keep your logo in front of them. Uh, if you are one of the people who do the birthday cards, um, send them out. Send them out and keep those people happy. Uh, and one other thing, when I'm done with this, I want you guys to comment in the comments on YouTube. Comment. Last week we didn't have a ton of comments, so definitely put it in there. What's your biggest problem? What you always leave behind going in. But the first one, customer retention, keeping those customers, understanding that you even exist because you know you do, but not everybody does until they need you. So stay relevant. The other big thing with staying relevant is making sure that they understand all the services you offer. So every service with a new customer or an existing customer, if it's a new service, has its own season. So spring, there may be other seasons uh, that have house washings bigger in the summer, right? There's not a lot of rain. Your houses seem to get dirtier. Uh, if you're in a southern climate where you have green on the siding, that's actually early spring because of the winter, depending on how wet it is, you start to get it. Or it goes into fall because you didn't have a wet winter, but you had a humid summer. It just depends. Each season has its own time to advertise different things. So go and do that. Don't forget about the existing clients. Go back and listen to the last episode. Uh, make them, keep them, and uh, that'll give you a couple extra ideas if you don't have them. Another big one that uh, I tend to forget because I hate it so very much. It is uh, part of the business, but I hate it, is uh, office work. Uh, office work constitutes the envelope stuffing. I hope you're doing that. Every day you have your invoices given to every client when you're done and it has uh, other things in there, satisfaction form. It has, uh, we call them third sheets, third sheets, which is uh, advertising, three different things. Make sure that that's still getting done. Those are super, super valuable. And if you can do those all the time, that's a big one. What else comes with office work? There's so many things that go into that, like making sure that uh, if you have anything coming up for print advertising or anything like that, that uh, all of that is slated, but you also have the uh, backside of collections, which we talked about. Collections is huge and you will forget about that because money is coming in until you realize that you're running a little low on liquid capital, then you realize you forgot to do the collection. Stay on top of it. It's so much easier to collect something after a week than it is after eight weeks. So much easier. 
So make sure to kind of stay on top of that. Now, office work in general could mean different things for different people. Um, but office work kind of is the first thing to go for what you actually are doing with your time. Because if you're out in the field, you're not doing the office work. You're so tired by the time you come back because you're doing eight, maybe 10 hour days that by the time you come back, it's like an hour of like, you know, typing whatever you're supposed to be doing and trying to keep up with it. It's very, very hard. You have to find time allocation to know if you're doing it in the morning, if you're doing it at night, maybe you're doing it both. You're not tired in the morning, so maybe come in an hour early, maybe come in two hours early, however long you need to, to make sure that all the office stuff, the clerical stuff is done. Maybe it's time that you look at getting in an office person. Um, I know, hiring somebody who doesn't actually make you money is super hard. That's the hardest position to hire. You have to really be ready. Because even if office stuff is super important, it doesn't actually make you money. If I hire a tech, I'm going to hire a tech because he's going to go out there and make me money. He's going to make me $65 an hour if I'm paying him 20 right? In an office situation, you hire what I call an office goddess. Even if it's for four hours a day, whatever you're paying her or him, you're not getting back. They're not actually making you money. They're making your life easier, which means you can go out there and make more money but they're not actually making you money. So you have to be in the right mindset for that. There are people out there, especially in clerical, that will do four hours a day. You know, you just got to find the right person who is smart and fast and very, very organized. That's the biggest key. Like you can teach anybody what you do, window cleaning and stuff. But when it comes to office or clerical, you need somebody. Who cares if they type fast? That's not a big deal. They need to be super, super detail oriented. They need to be able to like, you know, make folders and like, I mean, the best thing about an office person is to be so organized that you never have an issue with anything. That's where an office person is. Because if you find somebody who's very detail oriented, then they're going to remember things. They're going to have a schedule. They're going to have notes. They're going to have everything so that everything gets done all the time because that's how they function. And that's the type of person you need. It's nice if they can, you know, talk on a phone they're polite, chipper, that kind of thing. But it's not as important as being detail-oriented, anal even. Because if they are, they're going to bring that into their work. And that's what you need in that spot. So don't forget the office side of things. Super, super important. Um, if you haven't hired somebody either and you're thinking about it, look into it. If you can front the money. Now remember, if you're not doing benefits and things like that with uh, federal and state still, keep in mind that say 33% just for even numbers, it's even more than that. Uh, but say probably closer to 40% of whatever you pay them, you have extra. You know, So keep in mind for all that extra stuff. So can you really afford it? It's up to you. Clerical is one of those things too that hiring a family member uh, is sometimes the best position for that. They don't need to clean a window. They don't need to be good at that. But if you got a family member who's super anal that has a couple extra hours, maybe they're a stay-at-home mom and kids are starting to go back to school and you can kind of pick them off for a few hours here and there. Uh, I've even had it where uh, my um, office got us at this time. During tax season, season, she did tax stuff. So she didn't have as much time during the week. So she would come in on the weekends and do it. And what's cool about that is that... Um, on the weekends, if she's in there, then she's actually going to prep everything for the whole week. So you come in, everything was slated. I had every single day. It was very, very awesome. But anyway, it's different for everybody. So check it out. Office uh, people, I hate office stuff. I'm not good at it. Surround, people, surround yourself with people who are good at things you're not. I'm not good at office work. Don't forget it. There you go. I'm babbling so much of that. And collections. Don't be like me. Go collect some money. Make sure to stay on top of it. Another big one that you're going to forget because you're just going to be too busy. It's not even as much forgetting, but we talked about it back when it wasn't busy is the marketing calendar. The marketing calendar is super, super important because if you lay out a marketing calendar, then you know when you're going to be marketing, what you're going to be doing. You may have the whole year laid out every single week, the days of the week. You know that on Monday, 1,500 flyers are going out, postcards door hangers, whatever, right? Wednesday, you have this going. Friday, you have this going. If you forget that, you will not be striking when the iron is hot. Cliche, I know. 
But if it's in somebody's brain and everybody's calling you and you're busier than all get up right now, now's the time to advertise because you'll get more people. More people, it's all in their brains. Even if they don't hire you, they don't know you, they've never used you, it's still in the back of the brain. Now's the season, right? So make sure your marketing calendar is not getting uh, ignored. The worst thing you can do is so busy right now that you can't market. You can't uh, put out those things and you lack on the marketing calendar. And then what happens in June, July when things slow down a bit? You're like, oh, crap, we don't have any work. I got to go advertise. It's not in people's brains, man. You're going to get a half percent ROI in July, whereas right now you could be getting a 3% ROI. That's stupid crazy numbers in an ROI world. Stupid crazy numbers. Why not? Plus, if you can get 3% ROI right now, say just hypothetically, those 3% of people, of all those mailers that you send out, all those new customers, those 100 new customers, whatever you may have gotten in spring, can then be upsold other services, but then can be brought back on to get you in fall. Get that three to six month calendar when you're asking people to get back on. If you can pack it on now, even if your retention rate, say, is 80%, which is super low, I feel, in our industry. But 80%, that means that 80% of the people that you get in this spring because you worked your butt off to advertise while it was hot, 80% of those people are going to stay with you through fall. That's huge numbers. Now you can keep building on that. What if you get another 3% ROI in fall because you advertised when it was hot? Now you have 80% from spring carried over. You have then 80% carrying over to the next fall, 80% of your 80%. Like it's just ball. This is how you create this giant ball of people wanting to get hired. When you hear those people who have been in business for a while and they don't even advertise anymore, they're happy where they're at, they are booked out four weeks, whatever it is, this is how it happened. Like, especially if you are bringing on another crew, you need to get more people. If you're firing customers to get healthier, more money, better customers, you need more customers. There is 90% of the time you need to get more customers. Be it that you're getting rid of old ones to get new ones so that you're making more money by doing the same amount of work, or you have another crew to fill. Say you just want to grow this empire of yours. Getting new customers, you have to get them when it's hot. Now's that time. Staying with a marketing calendar, even if you're busy and you think, oh, how can I even put any more people? That's what is going to fill you through summer into fall. And all those new people that you're touching, those new people that are trying you, those new people who are trusting you are now going to be your customers in fall or next spring or whatever. Retention's huge. So you have to stay on that. Stay on your marketing calendar. If you haven't um, done a marketing calendar, go back, listen to some of our other episodes we've talked about the marketing calendar. Very, very important to lay it all out because otherwise, when you get busy, you just forget about it. All of a sudden, it's two months later and you're like, oh man, I haven't sent out anything. Now you're trying again. You missed two months. You'll never get back. Yesterday, whatever you didn't do yesterday, you're now one day behind in that. Think about that. You need to optimize it. So go back and look at that. Like I said, if you're not doing a marketing calendar, that's fine. Like, it's your business. I'm just some dude. I don't know nothing, man. But it may be something for you to look at. So definitely look into the marketing calendar. It's very, very valuable in my opinion. Um, The other thing that kind of goes with that, there's two more parts kind of on the marketing calendar. Uh, But it's it's, uh, current ads because, remember, your ads always are changing, Right. Uh, pre-spring special numbers are going to be different than your special now. Like your 20 window special now should be 249, not 199 like it is in spring. It's it's busy. You need to capitalize on that, right? You need to adjust pricing depending on season. You know, maybe you're not going to do as much of a percentage off on some things because you don't need to kind of advertise. It's the same reason that uh, window cleaning resource doesn't really have specials in the middle of spring. It just isn't needed. Why would we do specials when the work's always kind of coming in? So off-season buying is the same as off-season hiring. So keep in mind, current ads always have to change. If you are doing print ads, current print ads, like uh, uh, magazines, uh, like a monthly magazine or uh, newspapers or any of that stuff where you can change those ads, make sure that you're staying on top of that. Very, very important. 
The other thing is with those is that you're going to be doing new door hangers. You're going to be doing new uh, EDDM if you're doing every door direct mail from the post office, if you're doing uh, direct mail in general, if you're doing four by sixes, if you're doing whatever. Keep it fresh. You have to always be changing those things. Now, don't change them every day because you want to touch people with the same piece of mail three times. But eventually, you know, you're going to be doing that three weeks it takes you to send a mailer every week to somebody. Then, you know, you may wait a week to three weeks and you may send three more pieces out that are different to each of those people three times. Like that is the best and most efficient way to go. So change those ads and keep them current. Uh, the other thing that goes with that is social media. Social media is something that can be as live and as current as absolutely possible. You can change it right now from your phone. You could be listening to this in the background. Go into your social media and change specials, coupons. You may change codes. You may upload pictures. You may just be keeping it fresh. The big thing that people will lack is updating new content to their their Facebook uh, their Instagram, they're all of that when they're busy, right? Because there's just so much time in a day. But the big thing is, is that that all helps with rankings. It all helps to see activity. It makes people continue to see the new content. People continue to come back to continue to keep that in front of people. Don't always be salesy. Put a nice picture of like a sunset or a nice picture of like a lake house or a calm lake or, you know, early mornings or, a sleeping tech or, you know, uh, on the drive, if you know that, you know, long day, somebody sleeping in the truck, something like that. All that new content is always going to be out there, but it adds, you know, if your Facebook page has, you know, 5,000 people following it, that's just content that's getting sent out to the people who it will send to. Like, it's very, very, very valuable. So you have to keep your fresh content going out there in social media. When you are doing something like a um, um, Instagram, Instagram itself, you'll get buried if you don't. People aren't going to necessarily your Instagram page or your profile or whatever. They're seeing content to get people into kind of those groups. What your tags are is going to get new people in. If you can get every time you post something, you're getting two to five new followers, people who could potentially be interested in your services. Send something out a couple times a day, you're going to get that many more followers. More people see you, more people will like you. And it's a numbers game at that time where if you're in front of 5,000 people, you are going to, when those people need window cleaning or pressure washing, they're going to hire you. Staying in front of those people, now is still the time. If you are getting a high ROI and people calling with the rest of it, social media is the same thing. People are looking for it, finding it, and you're going to be there to, to help it. Don't leave it behind because then again, fall, you will not have the same amount of people that you would if you would have pushed it now. So social media, current ads, uh, current specials. If you have a slated phone um, uh, script for your office girl or whoever you have, uh, make sure that that's current with pricing and specials. Make sure that everything is continually current no matter how busy you are. It all falls really into office work, but uh, they're all very important in their own right, mind, uh, rights, I guess, blah, blah, blah. So make sure to stay with those. Um, and social media, I, I cannot, uh, if you listen to Grant Cardone, Grant is a very uh, in-your-face guy, and uh, sometimes people don't like him. I don't say listen to everything he says because uh, he's probably awesome, but it's... Some of the stuff is just too aggressive. I'm not huge in the aggressive, and he'd probably call me a weenie for that or something. But the big thing is, is that um, with Grant, he says you can't over uh, con. You can't make too much content on social media because people are getting flooded with so much content. They're used to a ton of content. Look at somebody scroll through Facebook sometime or Instagram. Like they're doing this and within, you know, five seconds, they've seen a hundred different things. You can't put too much in there. It's not like direct mail, uh, even direct mail, you really can't, but it's not like calls, right? You're not bugging people. You're creating content. So put it out there as much as possible and uh, 
more people will see it, the more it's out there. It's very obvious, but if you need help with that, get a Hootsuite or a Buffer. Uh, those are programs that will help push content to your social media uh, avenues. You can sit down one night, you could be, you know, hanging out watching TV at night, and you can be creating content to push for the next week. You know, there's stuff out there to help manage that, help your time. So look into it. It's uh, very valuable, basically. Uh, but updating social media is huge. Don't be stale. Don't be stale. And um, pretty much kind of the last one, another really big one that I try very hard to not be an issue ever for me, but it inevitably does, uh, is employee happiness. Now, if you don't have employees, awesome. You could still be talking about yourself. Uh, if you're working by yourself and you're just doing work, 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 I can't wait until June, take a second, man, go on a boat. Saturday or, or go down on a lake, go camping, go do something just to suck yourself out for a bit, right? We all need that kind of refresh. It's the same thing with employees. You may be working your guys so hard right now and you haven't had a chance to step back and see it, right? If you burn them out, then you're screwing yourself because not only is it still busy now you don't have these people, but now you got to try to hire somebody in the busy season. If you have to go in the field to cover for them, but you're normally in the office, all that office stuff isn't going to get done, right? Your employees are super valuable. Everybody, not everybody, one of the sides of it is people always go, well, you know, employees have to know they work for me. You know, there's 10 more of them if I could get rid of them, but we all know how valuable employees are. Employees sometimes don't realize that they're genuinely valuable to you and that needs to be refreshed. You need to let them know. You know, doing maybe a picnic or something in the summer for the families to kind of get together. Not cheesy, just do it. Something like that creates employee happiness. It creates a little bit of a bond. Shooting them bonuses, cash, like Friday. Hey, guys, here's an extra 100 bucks from the week for everybody. Like, here you go. Go have fun this weekend, man. You guys really worked it out. I really appreciate it. Right? We know in the summertime, depending on how many people are in your crew, you're, you're making huge, huge money. Giving that back shows them that you're appreciative. I mean, I know that there is too much, right? You obviously need to keep some assets. You need to make sure you have liquidness for equipment and for marketing and everything else. But keeping them happy doesn't necessarily always mean money. Shoot them some money. Buy them steaks one day. They come back to your shop and you got steaks cooking or something, you know? Uh, do little things. You know your people. You know what they'd like. Figure it out and treat them like the valuable people they are because they're going to get burnt out too. They're the ones out there doing the work and you're loading on more and more houses. You're getting stuff done. The more hours there are in a day, right? There's a lot of guys out there who it'll be light for you know, most of the day, they'll work until it's dark. You guys are coming in at 6 a.m. and they're leaving at 9 just to get things done. Maybe your guys are workaholics. Maybe they like that, but maybe they're going to get burnt out. Even the best employees can get burnt out. You have to kind of recharge their batteries. Only you can figure out what works best for you and your guys. Everybody's different. Every crew is different and every tech is different. So figure it out, but do not forget the people who are out there making you money. It is hugely valuable. And like I said, if you're listening uh, on any platform or even watching YouTube, go to YouTube and search this episode called Losing Sight, WCR Nation, Losing Sight. It's on Facebook, uh, I'm sorry, YouTube. But go in there and tell me what your biggest thing is that you leave behind. I want to hear it. Uh, tag me in Facebook, tag me in Instagram, whatever you want. My Instagram tag is Jersey WCR Nation. Um, but start a conversation. I love it when you guys... Uh, comments and the only thing i love more than that is when you buy your supplies through me beat that dead horse right 862-312-2026 be epic and and let me put in your uh orders i i get orders for 28 dollars people are like oh man hey i'm sorry or hey i'm in the field man can you sort of put some order some stuff up for me i'm sorry i do it for this is what i do every day understand the fact that when you call and put orders in through me if I do work for it or you just put it in your cart, I'm making my money. That's how I make my money to pay for all of my luxuries. 
like my uh, name brand spaghetti noodles. That's how I do it. So I'm more than willing to help. And listen, I do probably five a day emails and texts from people who just need help questions on, hey, what about this project? What should I bid? Where's my pricing at? I am, you know, I'm here to help you for absolutely everything. When I say I'm your rep, it's cheesy. We want to be a resource. Yes, I know. But I do want to help you in everything. That's why I do these shows, man. I do these shows to hopefully help people. And that's one of the big things that I do. The only thing I don't normally talk about is pricing too terribly. If you want, I will. But uh, people are like, hey, what's the price on this building? And they send me one half of one shot of the building. I can't tell you that, obviously. Uh, but I can tell you my brain, where it's at, what I would be choosing. And then you can kind of work it from there. But either way, my email's jersey at windowcleaner.com. And again, my number, 862-312-2026. Go out there. Don't forget anything. Keep being busy. Be awesome. Comment on YouTube. And until next week, go out there and be epic.